What up, people? Coach V Dubree Boxing had a great question from my man Abdullah Omar. He asked if I could do a video on the importance of counterpunching. I'm going to do one better and go into how to lead and counter. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you. Just hit 19,000 subscribers. Moving right along, we got bigger and better things to come. So make sure you hit that notification bell, like, subscribe, comment, share, and uh, you'll stay in tune with what's coming down the pipeline. So back to it. Counterpunching, for those that don't know, is basically throwing a response to incoming offense. So if someone throws a punch, you throw a punch right back. But that's not like trading tip for tap. Counterpunching, if done effectively, is where you can either deflect or evade the incoming shot and then catch your opponent with a clean punch. And preferably having preset counter punches in combination is the optimal way to counter, okay? Counter with one shot, that's great. But if you can counter with two shots, that's even better. And it's gonna completely shut down your opponent's offense. Now I could be here all day going into all the varieties of counters between orthodox versus southpaw, two southpaws, two orthodoxes, body head, all that, which I go into in my course. I'm, going, I'm, I'm putting together another one. But basically you want to have an amazing jab first and foremost. That is what people don't realize is the missing link to being an expert counter puncher. You don't just stand there randomly and respond to whatever comes your way. It's just way too much thinking on the fly and that's not how it's done. What you want to do is in your gym, you're going to train um, with your sparring partners and stuff like that doing drills. This is, this is something you should spend tons of time doing. Spend whole sessions doing this, just drilling different options. Again, there's so many variables and varieties of counters for different circumstances and situations and opponents. You're going to have to take it case by case. But when you have an opponent in front of you and you have a variety of jabs, jab to the body, straight jab to the head, vertical jab, slipping on the inside, slipping on the outside, all these different jabs will create different openings. And then you can not only counter punch, but you can counter the counter punch. It goes, you know, the levels can continuously just get more complicated. But starting with the basics, the jab coming to you is going to be the easiest punch to counter and also for your opponent to counter. That's why you have to make sure your defense is super tight because they're going to catch on and start trying to do it back to you. So the jab is usually, I've seen more jabs to give a basic example, counted by the straight right. I've seen a lazy jab, because that's the whole key about it. When you counter on somebody, you're countering them having a fundamental mistake, like a lapse in their defensive response. So a guy throws a lazy jab. The lazy jab is the easiest, most commonly countered shot. And most people counter it with a straight cross. Say it's an orthodox versus southpaw, and the orthodox guy, say he throws a lazy jab, then in that case, usually the southpaw throws a quick right hook. That's the easiest counter to a lazy jab for the southpaw. So if you can counter actually in combination, which is, again, this is what I want, I want to see you guys doing in your training sessions in the gym. Um, you know, say somebody throws that lazy jab and you're a southpaw, you can counter with a cross up with a, or a right hook and an uppercut and then pivot around them. So not only do you counter with at least two shots, work on trying to counter with two shots at a time. First start with one and then work on two. Um, and then move and try to flank them. That's what you want to do. So, and also keep in mind that when you throw in a lot of jabs to the body and to the head, you're not only keeping your opponent from mounting any offensive momentum, you're also, in the eyes of the judges, controlling the action. That's effective aggression. Even though it's not a devastating big punch, the jab is still keeping your opponent in check, shutting down his offense, and again, is racking up points, putting money in the bank, just giving you that extra edge in case it goes to the scorecard and make sure you got the lead. So, um, when you're in the gym, again, get your spawn part. And I would make a whole session sometimes, maybe once a week on just countering. 
And again, start counter with one shot at a time. Have your opponent throw the shot, leave it there, your partner, and then just look at whatever's open and say, all right, decide, you know, in the training session. All right, so again, say they got those jabs to the body. The easiest uh, response with two uh, same stance guys, two orthodox guys, is across to the head. And then maybe add the left uppercut. So you throw the jab to the body, cross to the head, left uppercut, then you move. Don't stick around and mind your work. So bait them in with the jabs, see what openings come up, work on your jab after your, um, your drills, or you, you can do a little beforehand, but I would recommend doing it better afterwards. Do your bag work with jabs, a lot of jabs, every variety of jabs, with implementing the counter punches, you know, in the scenario in your mind where you're working the bag, pop the jab to the body, slip, boom, boom, move away. Jab to the head, imagine the counter, counter, boom, boom, move away. And again, if you do that once a week and then you start seeing these opportunities when you're sparring and then as you progress on to fighting and stuff like that, these things will be preset your muscle memory will be right there. You'll be able to respond at the drop of a dime. You're gonna look impressive. And then uh, as time goes on, you get more and more sophisticated. So anyway, I hope you found this informative. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that notification bell. Leave some comments in the comment section. Let me know what other ideas you got. You guys keep hitting me with some good ideas. And I got a lot of um, you know topics that come, but if you got a good one, I'll put that to the top of the list. Anyway, till the next time, we out of here. I hope.